friend Gary said he lives in a very remote location. Yeah, uh, well off the grid. Hello, my name is Rolly, ZO1BQD. Now I've been visiting my friend Gary, ZL3, Sugar Victor, over the last few days, and Gary lives off the grid as much as he possibly can. Now that's his whole house, his whole ham radio station, the lot. I'll tell you what, let's let Gary tell the story, shall we? So, pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee, go on, let's chat with Gary. And we run 24-7 on solar here and you saw the pictures on the roof of the house and the shed and it is feeding. Uh, we split the load and it comes into these two uh, regulators. These are Outback uh, regulators made in the US and each one of those will do 80 amps at 50 volts. So at the moment uh, we're running at uh, 54.7 volts so basically the batteries are all fully charged. It's just sitting there on float and about 10 o'clock this morning these all the batteries are fully charged. The system is really designed for the winter when we have less sun of course. Yep. Uh, so this time of the year it's just a ride in the park. Yeah, winter right. time we get probably over 90% of our electricity from it. Uh, this inverter here is running the whole house and if we ever have a problem with that inverter, we throw a switch at the top, we can switch to this inverter or to this other one here. Right. Uh, so we've got plenty of backup there. Uh, if there is no electricity, no, because this will automatically switch back to the mains power if we uh, run out of solar. And that can happen after, say, four or five days of no sun. If there's a big storm going through, it will try and switch back to the mains power. If that's not available, we can turn on our diesel generator and that will run the whole house and it charges goes into this big charger here which is a, a one kilowatt um, charger 50 volts at uh, 20 amps and that will charge the batteries at the same time that it is running the whole house so we've sort of designed it so that it's flexible reliable self-maintaining and basically we just forget about it and uh You've got one or two batteries hidden away, I guess, somewhere then, uh, Gary. Uh, just a tad, you could just say that. Just a few. Uh, this whole area here is uh, batteries, and um, <clears throat> you can see here that it's. Uh, I've still got to alter this uh, little piece on the end here, actually. Um, let's get this out of here. Yep, now if I. Didn't come with a school kid, did it? There we go. And if I slide that along there, you can oh see word. you can see the number of batteries. You can see the cables are all way bigger than is required. And because there is six lots of eight uh, batteries, the fusing for the batteries is only about 20 amps. And the reason for that is you take two six twelve hundred and twenty 120 amps. That means when you're using, uh, you know, your maximum power up there, you're only drawing a little amount from each individual battery. So the circuit breakers under there, there's fuses, there's uh, big buzz bars over there for the negative, there's one over here for the positive, and it's got a, um, a, a little cover on it. I was thinking, you know, how do I make up this cover to go over to the positive terminal so there's no accident, okay? What you do is you get a Coca-Cola bottle, <laughs> a two-litre one, you cut it. Yeah, here we go. Still got the label on it. Yep. And that just fits straight over the top of the contacts, and that means you don't accidentally touch it with a crescent or do something you know that you shouldn't be doing. And that just provides um, additional safety. And it's like that with everything uh, that I do. Is safety's number one. For and our, if you get uh, the over. safety. For our overseas uh, viewers on that, that's what we call Kiwi ingenuity. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's what we call recycling Coca-Cola <laughs> yeah, bottles. Recycling Coca-Cola bottles, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but, this is fantastic. You know, Gary. when you do things safely, mm. it means you live for another day to be able to do another project. Yeah, you know, yeah, it is. Simple as that. Oh, but yeah. no, that's the setup, and um, that's been in there now a few years, and it just sticks away um, and um, does the trick nicely. Um, I 
all of these um, cables here are crimped, but they're also soldered. Right. Super important with uh, batteries is to always solder the crimp joints because if it's not quite right and you're drawing your maximum current, it can start a fire. Whereas when you sweat the solder into the joint, even when it is crimped, and yes, I know crimping works 99% of the time perfectly well, but when you're dealing with the safety of batteries, my advice is to always sweat some solder into it and make sure you've got a good contact. And the other thing is I had a thermal camera on here to make sure there's no hot spots anywhere because that is a potential fire. Right, great, brilliant. There we go. Thank you, Gary.